Hi. Uh, this series of videos will be part of a new course for Maths Olympiad that I'm building. Uh, the course has a lot of sections and each section will basically have a theory video where we discuss the basic concepts of the topic that we are about to talk about. And then we have a set of problem videos which will give examples of ways in which that theory is employed and basically will help you understand the problem solving aspects of that particular topic. So right now, we will start off with the first section of the course that is introduction to set theory. So this video is basically a quick recap of all the basic tools that you need to start solving questions with sets and basically understand set theory, which is the underpinning of a lot of mathematics. So we start off with sets. So what is a set? First of all, so I'll write the definition. It's a collection of elements. Collection of elements is a set. These elements can be anything. Now, they can be numbers. They can be objects. Collection of elements is a set. What is the What are the properties of this collection that make it a set? The elements of a set, elements of a set are definite. That you know exactly which element is what. They are distinct. Distinct as in you cannot have repeated elements in a set. And also the order doesn't matter. Order doesn't matter. So basically if we show a set like this A, B, C. Obviously if you write it as B, C, A. This is actually the same set as this. So this is not a new set. This is the same set. The order has been changed. You also cannot have a set like this. A, B, B. That's not a set. This, this set is actually the set A, B. Because you cannot repeat elements in a set. So you can just, men you can just mention them once and that is enough. Right? Now, the second thing that we look at here is uh, some standard notation. So given any property P, given any property p there exists there exists a unique set a unique set that consists of all the objects that satisfy the property p that consists of all objects which satisfy which satisfy the property P. So this notation is very important to understand. Uh, so how do I write this statement? Given any property P, the set of all the elements, all the objects that satisfy property P. So how do I write it? I'll write it like this. S is a set of X such that PX. Now, when I write this PX, this means the property P, P property is satisfied by x is true for x and this symbol here means such that so i want you guys to understand how to read this notation this is, notation is read like x is such that p property is true for x right so you should understand how to read this notation obviously we'll say we'll see situations where we will write this in more complicated ways, we'll have sets which will have weird properties. But in general, this is the structure in which you can describe a set of all objects that satisfy a property P. Okay. Now, some standard things that all of you might already be aware of. What is A intersection B, A union B? So this is the set of all elements such that X belongs to either A or B. So basically A union B is the set of all objects which belong to either A or B. You have to keep in mind the or statement here, right? So it is either in A or in B. The Venn diagram for it can be shown like this. If this is set A and this is set B, the whole of this region is A union B. Any element lying in all of these regions is part of A union B. A intersection B is basically X belongs to A and X belongs to B. So this and is the crucial statement here. 
a complement c this is a complement basically it means that if you have a universal set from which all the elements of a set are being taken from if this is a and this is my universal set there are some elements which do not belong to a which are outside a but are inside the universal set so complement is the set of all these elements so the outer region here, which is outside A, but is part of the universal set, stands for A complement, right? We also have things like the difference of two sets, A minus B. A minus B or B minus A basically will be set of elements. I should not write B minus A nearby because that will have a different meaning. What is the meaning of A minus B? A minus B is set of elements that Excuse me, that belong to A, but do not belong in B, but do not belong in B. So basically, it's the set of all elements in A that are not present in B, right? Okay, then we have some distributive laws of sets, distributive laws. So I'll just outline some of these. So what are these distributive laws? If you have A union B whole complement, that will be equal to A complement intersection B complement. Notice that when you do union of two sets and take the whole complement, the union has become an intersection now when we use the complement individually on each set. Right? This can be easily shown through a Venn diagram. I will leave that to you. You can prove this yourself, drawing the Venn diagram and finding these exact regions. And you should be able to prove that A intersection B whole complement is A complement in union B complement. Here it was A union B whole complement, which was A complement intersection B complement. So basically, due to these distributive laws, actually I have labeled them incorrectly. Actually, what I have just now mentioned is the De Morgan's laws. So these are De Morgan's laws, not the distributive laws. Uh, that's my mistake, but I'll correct that. This is De Morgan's laws. The proof is by a Venn diagram. You will be able to convince yourself using that. So in De Morgan's laws, you have union sign becoming the intersection, right? So I will leave that to you. Just confirm that these are true. The distributive laws that I was mentioning are these distributive laws. Distributive laws of sets are A intersection B union C. So the property of intersection is distributive means you can take A intersection B. Now you can write this as A intersection B and do union with A intersection C. So this intersection symbol was outside the bracket. So then you are just like we do things like this, right? x multiplied by y plus z is basically x into y plus x into z, right? Here, the multiplication symbol is distributive, right? Multiplication is distributive over addition. So just like that, we are doing this here. So I hope you can see the parallels to algebra here. The other distributive law is with the union sign. If you interchange the intersection and union symbols here, it becomes A union B intersection with A intersection. A union C. Intersection with A union C. So I hope that is clear. This also can be shown with the help of a simple Venn diagram. Again, I will leave that to you. You can do that yourself. Uh, then some more concepts that we will need for problem solving. Uh, these are as follows. So what is a finite set? Finite set and cardinality of a set. Cardinality of a set. So cardinality of a set is the total number of elements present in a set. Number of elements in a set. And usually if you have a set A, the cardinality is given by N of A or sometimes written as mod A. Mod A also means the number of elements of that set. So what is a finite set? Using the definition of cardinality, we can say that a finite set is a set whose cardinality is a finite number. Cardinality is a finite 
number. Or basically, mod of A is finite. So, for example, you can easily see that the set of all set of all integers between 1 to 100. Set of all integers between 1 and 100 will be finite. But obviously, the set of all real numbers between 1 to 100 will not be finite because the real numbers are infinite in number. Between any two real numbers, you can place an infinite number of real numbers, right? So cardinality is a very important concept that we'll see applications of soon. Uh, we also have the inclusion and exclusion principle. Inclusion and exclusion principle for sets. Here, what we say is we are counting the total number of elements, for example, in the set A union B. So, so the number of elements of set A union B, notice the notation that I have used. I have put a mod sign, which means I'm trying to find the cardinality of this A union B set. And the number of elements of A union B will be simply number of elements of A plus number of elements of B minus number of elements of A intersection B. Now, this can be understood from a Venn diagram. So suppose this is A, this is B. If you realize the number of elements in A will count all the elements here and then will count all the elements here, while the number of elements in B will count all the elements here, and again, it will count this section once more. So basically, this section, all the elements here will be counted twice when you do this, right? When you do number of elements of A plus number of elements of B, the section of elements which are in the intersection of A intersection B will be counted twice. So we need to subtract them once. Because finally, ultimately, what we need is all the elements that exist in A union B, but we cannot double count elements there. So in order to remove the double counting, you have to subtract it once. The A intersection B part has to be subtracted once. So this principle is called the inclusion and exclusion principle. And it can be generalized like this. A union B union C will be equal to number of elements in A plus number of elements in B plus number of elements in C minus A intersection B minus B intersection C minus C intersection A and then you do a plus A intersection B intersection C. Similar arguments will help us understand this result as well. Here, you are counting the elements in this portion three times. Then here, you are subtracting them three times. So now, if you take the first six terms of this expression, this set of elements is not even counted once. So you have to add them once more back, right? So. I hope you can convince yourself of this. If you have doubts on this, this theory is there in standard books. You will be able to understand. Uh, one more thing that I wanted to mention was an important application of sets is basically how we use sets to define functions. Use sets to define functions. So you might, might have learned in your maths classes that you can define a function between two sets basically A and B, where there are some elements here and the elements here are connected to the elements here through a mapping, through a relationship. So you have a situation like this, where some element here A is connected to other elements here B. So you can say that F of A is equal to B, where A exists in this set, A belongs to capital A, whereas B belongs to capital B. So when you have functions like this, you need to understand a couple of terms here, which is basically injective or into functions, into and surjective or onto functions. Into and onto functions are important concepts because sometimes they are useful in counting problems because you can establish a bijective function, bijective function would be a one one on two function one one on two function between two sets and if you have a bijection between two sets then the number of elements of those two sets must be same so i will quickly discuss what is into and on two here so into basically means that there are some elements here in the set b which are not mapped to any pre-image in set a 
So if you have a situation like this, for example, a function f of x is equal to x square is defined from the set r to r, right? This set is the set of real numbers and this set is also a set of real numbers. Then you will have all sorts of real numbers here and there are infinite other real numbers, but I'm taking three of them, one, minus one, and two. And here you will have also all sorts of real numbers. But you will realize that all the squares, the square of one is one, the square of two is four, the square of minus one is also one. So what happens is the squares of all the numbers in set A are always positive. So the negative elements in set B have no connection to the set A, right? So there are a lot of negative numbers in set B, which have no pre-image in set A. So function where the B set has some elements which are not connected to any elements in A set are called injective or into functions. And functions where this doesn't happen, or basically there are no elements in the B set where there is no pre-image in the A set, such functions are called surjective functions or onto functions. So if we change the sets here, change the sets here from R to R plus, R plus stands for all the positive real numbers, then obviously the minus one here is excluded from the set and the same function becomes a surjective function, which is onto. So onto function in simple words is that any element that you pick in the second set, in the B set, it has to have some connection or some pre-image in the A set. If that is not true for even one single element in the B set, the function cannot be surjective. So I hope you understand the injective and surjective meaning. Uh, one, one and on two are straightforward. What is the meaning of one, one and on two? Uh, on two we have already discussed. One, one and many one functions I want to talk about. So one one function is when a, a single element here will have a certain output and no two elements in A set can have the same output. So for example, the lines that we have drawn here show us a one one function right now because all the outputs are distinct, right? So basically what is another way to talk about one one functions is Every element of B set has only one input from A set. So only one pre-image. So f of x is equal to x squared is clearly not 1, 1 because f of minus 1 is the same as f of 1 and both of them are mapping to the output 1, right? So 1, 1 and many 1 are pretty simple. Many 1 functions are when multiple inputs have a common output. And in 1, 1 functions, you cannot have two different inputs having the same output, right? So these basic concepts of sets are being used to sometimes define functions. And when we do the questions, we do the problems, we'll use some of these properties to solve some problems. Now, the next few videos in this particular section of the course, the set section, will be talking about slightly tricky problems on set theory. And we will learn how to employ pro uh, problem solving strategies to solve them. So stay tuned for more content. There are a lot of videos that are going to come up. This is just the first chapter and then we move on to the entire syllabus for uh, Olympiad Maths. The course will go on for a long time and I think it will take me at least five, six months to build the full course. But hopefully you will learn from the content and if you go in a sequence and if you are in a lower class right now, grade nine, grade 10, then this will be very useful for you, not just for Olympiads, but also for your JE or other competitive exams that you might be training for. So hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Stay tuned for more content and please like the video and subscribe to the channel. You will definitely benefit from these videos that are coming up. See you next time.